I have my little chemical factories here. They're called plants. Plants produce a huge array of compounds. And historically, our medicines came from plants. Morphine, isolated from the poppy. Colchicine, isolated from the uh, crocus. However, today, many of our medications are made synthetically in the lab. And this has been really a fascinating development. And the concept really goes back to the late 1800s, when for the first time, researchers found that there were certain compounds isolated from plants that had activity in the body that could also be countered by compounds isolated from other plants. So for example, atropine and pilocarpine, both of which came from plants, had different effects on the body. One would cause secretions, the other one would dry up secretions. And then in the 1920s, it was discovered that there was a molecule that was found in the human body that caused a lot of misery. This is a representation of that molecule. What is this? This is histamine. Histamine is a compound that is responsible for allergies. Whenever some foreign substance comes into our system that we react to in, in an allergic way, it is because it triggers the release of histamine in the body. Well, in the early 1900s, the structure of histamine already was determined. So scientists knew exactly its, its composition. And the idea of the receptor theory that I mentioned before was already well-founded. The notion that some compounds would react with certain receptors in the body and could be blocked by other molecules. And then along came histamine. So what about the possibility of blocking the action of histamine? If someone was allergic to pollen or something in, in, in the, uh, some other substance in the environment that triggered histamine release, why not try to block the action of histamine? So what did the researchers do? They looked at the structure of the molecule and they tried to investigate which part of it fits into a receptor. And it turned out with histamine, it was this little branch here, nitrogen, carbon, and carbon that fit into the receptor. So the idea was to design another molecule that maintained this little piece, but had something else here. And this is how molecules called antihistamines were born. Part of the molecule similar to histamine, the rest not. So it still fit the receptor site, but it did not activate it. So in the 1940s, the first antihistamines were uh, introduced and they had a huge impact, of course, on, on, uh, on medicine and on people's health. And then in the 1970s, it was discovered that histamine could also provoke a reaction in the stomach. It could cause excess secretion of acids. That could lead to an ulcer. So the search was on to find an antihistamine that would block histamine in the stomach, where the receptor sites were slightly altered. And a drug was introduced by the name of cimetidine, which was an antihistamine, but it was a very specific one that blocked the action of histamine in the stomach. And I'm telling you this story because it has an interesting historical connection for me. Back in the late 1970s, my mother was diagnosed with, a, with an ulcer and had to be taken to the hospital. And the surgeon looked at her and said that this needs uh, an operation. The ulcer has to be uh, surgically uh, fixed. And uh, I thought, gee, you know, maybe we better get a second opinion on this. And we did, consulted another uh, doctor, a, a gastroenterologist, who told us about this new antihistamine, this H2 receptor uh, antagonist that had just been developed by the name of cimetidine that was on the market as Tagamet, and said, let's see if this works first before resorting to surgery. And indeed, it worked. She never had another uh, attack of ulcers ever again, and Tagamet uh, came into widespread use as a drug to treat uh, uh, ulcers without need for surgery. But the reason that this is so interesting is because it was all based on the knowledge of molecular structure. So we have come a long way from isolating drugs from plants to the laboratory where we can synthesize molecules with specific molecular structures to do what we want them to do.